Dear friends, feeding the multitude is a radical, even a revolutionary miracle in the Bible. It is the story of Jesus taking just a few loaves and fish and feeding literally thousands who came out to a deserted place to listen to him. In the New Testament, we have no fewer but six accounts, parallels or clones in all four Gospels. Modern theologians interpret it as a miracle of sharing. And I think that we can add a new dimension to it. In the Gospel of John, we hear that the bread which Jesus broke and shared around with those thousands was made of barley. That is an unusual, very unique bread and possibly indicating the beginning of harvest. It was taboo, you need to understand, strictly forbidden to eat anything from the harvest before the first barley was dedicated in the temple. Jesus giving thanks, breaking bread up in the Galilean countryside might be avoiding this holy duty, taking the temple offering and distributing it directly among his hungry followers. We know from contemporary records that such behavior, especially avoiding cereal first fruits, was a serious religious crime punishable by very high fines all around the ancient world, not only among the Jews, but also Greeks and Romans. And that is about the bread and now about the fish. Many of Jesus' first and main disciples were fishermen. Last week I mentioned they were heavily taxed by Herod Antipas and his government. Herod Antipas built fishing infrastructure around the Lake of Galilee, ports, markets, fish processing industry, and primary source of government revenue were called taxes, but in fact were tolls and fees collected for the use of those ports and markets. Fishermen could catch as much fish as they wanted, and that was the problem we mentioned last week, but they had to pay fees to bring their catch on shore and to the markets. And the government and fishmongers and processors took up to 70, even 80% of their profit. But if the fishermen landed their boats by the shore and not at the port, and if they did not take their fish to the market but shared them and ate them in the wilderness, away from market towns, they avoided these extortion duties, suddenly had abundance of food. By feeding multitudes, Jesus might be avoiding extortion taxes by both religious and secular authorities and showcasing an alternative, an open, generous sharing among farmers and fishermen, showing that without exploitation, there is more than enough to go around for everyone. And this tax-dodging dimension of this miracle is something you might not know about the Bible. And now, this Sunday, one day after the birthday of Charles Darwin, we celebrate evolution in our church. This great idea is not only about evolution of species, Modern Darwinism recognized it can be applied to evolution in the social and cultural realms. And so on this Evolution Sunday, 
we will look at the evolution of Holy Communion, Eucharist or Lord's Supper. After all, bread and fish was a common way of depicting Holy Communion in the first few Christian centuries.